Hello everyone. Thank you so much for attending our series of February doll talks here at the Grovian Doll Museum. This is going to be our last live seminar for this series here in uh, February. We're going to be doing a lot more with the Grovian and we've had the best time. But this talk is especially fun because our studio audience, yes, we've actually had you as our audience all week and we have a studio audience right here. They went through the Grovian and they picked out their number one picks, their favorite things in the museum that they want us to talk about. I even picked out a couple things and there's some fabulous things here that we're gonna discuss with Michael. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be relaxed and if you guys are on, let us know you're here and share the video and the love of doll collecting with everyone. So, Michael and Murray, how are you? Hi, everyone on Ruby Lane. <laughs> this is Murray, the famous toothless poodle. <laughs> he is a visitor here, and he's had a wonderful time, and he loves to be in on the presentations. Yes, as you can tell, he is very enthralled by everything that's been going on. Oh, yeah. And thank you for the hospitality. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to put you down, Murray. <laughs> so... Um, the audience choice, I have nothing to do with it. It's what they chose. Um, it's a, a really an interesting mix of things that they wanted to learn about. Um, so I'm gonna just start. So the first thing I'd like to start with is um, Kay picked this really wonderful piece of Americana and this is an area of the Grovian Museum that we're working on because we don't have a, a plethora of American items. But this is a Mason Taylor. She's great. And it's just in wonderful condition. And we're very fortunate to have one in this condition. This is the original paint, although it looks like the, wow. almost like the day it's That's made. Incredible. It's the original paint. And how old is this doll? Uh, they're from the 1860s. Uh, 1860s on. Boots. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the early ones, too. Catherine Peterson just said, hello. Hi, hi. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a wonderful little piece. You know, I, you know they've, they've, got, they've got bodies that are just wonderful for dressing, but they're Imposing. also such they mechanical. They kind of have yeah. yeah, mechanical marvels. So for modesty's sake, we put this little sampler there. But this was Kay's choice. You know, Kay collects... Kay collects uh, cloth. She collects she, cloth. She has and, an eye. And Americana. Mm. I think th uh, and, and different things, too. So that was her choice. And I thought it was a very thoughtful choice. Love that. Then Judy, Judy goes the gamut, which most collectors do. I mean, most of us do. So she picked out this uh, Dehors lady, Alexander Dehor lady. And she is... A fantastic. Let me get you. So Just you phenomenal. Face. She's got the fully molded shoulder plate. If you can see, she's got molded breasts with beautiful lines there. Wonderful, uh, wonderful arms, hand, arms, hands. Fabulous face, but really a to die for costume. This, this costume. Let me go and show just... them around the back of this. It, uh, it... I can't even bring the words to describe this amazing yeah. marvel of a costume. Totally original. All of this detailing with the pearls and the just the color. Do you think it was originally a salmon or more like a fuchsia? I think it was a it bright, hasn't faded I think it was very a much. bright coral. Bright coral. That was a very popular Look color at, this, at the everybody. time. And I, I mean, this is just a very labor-intensive doll. And when the the one of the main retailers for the, these dolls was Maison Guillard, which they were the purveyors to the imperial prince, the, the son of um, uh, Napoleon III and Empress Eugenie. So she's just a wonderful piece. Just absolutely and then, then Judy went from this fashion doll to this really wonderful um, Door of Hope doll that these were made with the, from the Door of Hope mission. And, and I think Ruby Lane has another program of, of Door of Hope. We did. So, I mean, this is just a real cutie, but look at, it's a kindergarten child, but look at the little shoes. Those little fox slippers are just- Aren't those cute? They're little yes, foxes. They're absolutely incredible. Sometimes they're kittens and lions, How but these playful. are little foxes. Playful and, and wonderful. And, but you know, the whole thing is just enchanting. But you know what it's interesting is, they do kind of work together. 
You know, when something's good, it's good. It doesn't matter if it's from um, 1860 or 1920. Good is good. Good is good. Yeah. And her fan, uh, I just wanted to point out, has this wonderful mask detailing. It yes. has the, the It's a the fan cutout. that's also a mask, yeah. so you could wear it to a masquerade ball. So those were, those were Judy's choices. Thank you, Judy, for the two uh, opposite yet wonderful examples for us to look at. We love them. And this wonderful character doll, you know, we do love dolls with provenance. And funny thing, this doll originally, what, it's a Cameron Reinhardt uh, 107. It's, I think, one of the most beautiful. It's my favorite of the the character doll series. I mean, I love almost all of them, but this is my favorite. And what's very interesting about this is this doll at one point lived on the Monterey Peninsula and um, somehow it got sold off and we bought it back east. So something that That's was wonderful. originally here at the time of the character doll market. And we'll, yeah, we'll show, show you the mark. In the back what it looks like. This is an extremely rare character doll known as Carl, Carl. by Kamer and Reinhardt, and it's a 107. He is just fantastic. And I think get in to show them the facial features because I think that our viewers need to know that there are some of these that are being made that are not authentic. That they're not wow. authentic. And there are certain characteristics to look for. And one of the main things is really start feeling a feeling bisque of any kind, any antique bisque. Not only look at it, feel it, mm -hmm. because it's very different than what's being reproduced. It has a it, it has a grittier smoothness, feel, yeah. but gritty. Yeah. It's very subtle. Very smooth yet subtle, yes. Um, absolutely. Uh, our shop actually has an incredible fake. Um, well, that, that, I, that I use as a teaching tool for people to absolutely, to and see. you should and, um, get and it out there. Um, I mean, I think it's great to have that. It's also great if you've got someone that's got a nice little uh, Dremel tool to have them go in and put, you know, nine, uh, 2017 mm -hmm. drill in it, yeah. so that that way, it if it left your hands sure. and it got back into circulation, I mean, we have we have sold dolls to people and said, this is a reproduction. And then somehow down the line, it gets resold two or three times down and it becomes not a reproduction. Right. And then I really realized that a nice reproduction doll, there's nothing wrong with that. But you just don't want someone to get burned with that. You don't want to do a disservice yeah. to the doll yes. community because when you and, buy something, and you want it to be reproductions and fakes and forgeries, then it leads me to this one. So this is, if you looked at it. You might think this was a reproduction. This, this is, you'd think, oh, that's a Schmidt. This is a Sonnenberg version of a Schmidt. This is the, this is as old as a Schmidt from the same time. The German doll makers went to France. They bought up French dolls. They took them back and they made molds of them. So it's a very unique uh, piece because it's when you look at the painting is everything is correct mm -hmm. there's just something that's a little bit different of course it helps it's on a German body that's a good indication but the I can't I don't want to mess up her hair and her hat but the, the the cut of the head I've never seen it on another doll it's very unusual and um, you know of course I was able to examine the inside of it so I know that it is mm -hmm. a, a real antique doll and it's poured bisque rather than pressed bisque because uh, a Schmidt, a, a French Schmidt, would be pressed bisque. The Germans used the, used the pouring method. Um, but it's, to me, I love this doll and I think that the, the Sonnenberg types are completely undervalued. And look at the lovely outfit and the shoes and the wig. She has all the trimmings. Yeah, she yeah. Is I mean, so much fun. I mean, if you put her next, we have a, the museum does have a Schmidt. And if we put her next, you know, you would be almost impossible to tell. So where does she play? With the German dolls? With the French well, dolls? Well, we, we, we like to play with people's minds, so we mix them in. Because then you can really find out if they have, uh, if they're prejudiced. You can say, oh, that's a beautiful doll. And then you say, that's German. And then you can tell... Do they still think it's a beautiful doll? Right. Yeah, so play I little, do, I do uh, play A little with mind that. trick there. 
She's fantastic. Now this little, we did a nice program on wax dolls. Now look at this little item. Kay picks this one. Look at her little face. And this is tiny. So I think she's like eight and a half inches tall. She's tiny. Tiny. But here's the thing that makes her really, really special. She has a whole wardrobe. Look at this of wardrobe. Clothes. She is like a little mini Rose Percy. She, with and all if of you really furniture. look at if you look at her, look at actually her face looks like Rose Percy. Yes, they have it's a nice and round similar. and red cheeks. So and this blue eyes. this um, we didn't include this in in the wax show just because we you know we've got this the board and we didn't have space for it. But you know it's a wonderful piece with beautiful oh, things of trends. the you know the electric blues and the purples and the reds and the golds it's just super 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 and and the thing about this these little ones these could have you know absolutely been play dolls but actually the little ones could have also been have a double use they could be play dolls or they could also be in england it was very uh, um common and coveted to have a wax angel at the top of your tree. So this could have been an she angel could've. that was put into service as um, a doll. I mean, they'd use any kind of doll. They'd use a Parati or whatever. Sometimes they're big, but this would make a nice little Christmas angel. She's so, wonderful. So it's really cute. Pam and, just commented saying, all I can say is wow. Good. And it's got the poured wax limbs, head, and the legs, just like, you know, Rose Percy or the any others, and then the cloth. Cloth body. She's stuffed. wonderful. If you guys are tuning in, we're here with our last program at the Grovey, and we are doing viewer's choice. So our studio audience went through the museum and picked their what top they wanted. picks, what they, they want to talk about. And this and this was, you know, we saw her earlier in one of the programs. And it was nice she got picked again. This is Charlotte. That is our uh, Albus doll with the jointed knees that we're, we're using for our October workshop. And, you know, look at that pouty face. Just, so chubby and wonderful. Yeah, and and what was nice is we actually had a mold made of, of um, Charlotte, and this is the little Charlottes, and these were made for us by Carl Armstrong. But you know what's so fun about these dolls is, look at that. I mean, you can Just do wonderful. so much with it. You can, they, she can pray at night. She can sit in a chair. I mean, they really are. You know, they're like candy. Let's face it. Wonderful. And this. The next doll I'm going to, um, I one time was at a lecture and the person giving the program said, there's no such thing as a mint condition Lenji. Now, I think anytime you make a statement like that, I mean, you've, you're, you're in gonna, trouble. Yep. You're in trouble. So here we have a Lenji box that was made, this is, you know, casebook Lenchy design, except that it was made for Liberty of London. So this would have been, if you see it says Liberty of mm -hmm. London all over it, this would have been made specifically for Liberty of London, which is a shop in London that's famous for their fabrics scarves. and a very hot, I guess, scarves, high-end things. So in it is a 300 series Lenchy, and we call these sweater boys. So this is from about 1930. Now I'm look, look at the condition of this, Rachel. It's bright. Is this not like the day that it was made? It is. This is. I brand mean, new this condition. is brand new condition. So, therefore, you know, you can't look yeah. at that. Yeah. Front, back, you know, the cheek color, um, you know, the the, the hair. I mean, there's no no spotting, nothing on it. Look at the shoes yeah, are really immaculate. Socks. So when you say that there's no such thing as a, maybe in their collection there isn't, but you know, out, it's a great big yeah, world. There's a lot of unopened attics out there. Exactly, people. and <laughs> this could have been given, I mean, we don't know, was this given to a child that did not survive? Was this given to someone? A child that didn't like dolls? It didn't like dolls. It. Was it given know. to someone who loved dolls, but you know, an adult that was a, uh, you know, a closet doll collector mm -hmm. in 1930. There's, who knows <laughs> why, but it's a miracle. Yes, maybe it's sad that it was never played with, but it gives us an example of what really, I mean, there's not a moth hole or anything. So there, it is possible to have one in mint condition. 
So then the last one. This one I'm really hoping this someday one, we might see for sale on Ruby Lane. Um, this one Rachel Hoffman picked. <laughs> and if, um, if I got to have a choice, this would be my choice also. When I see this doll, I am proud to be an American and a Californian. And I'm gonna tell you why. We're in the Monterey Peninsula. The, the bay is 26 miles wide. On the other side of the bay is Santa Cruz. And during the Great War, there was a, we had a shortage of dolls. There was no dolls being imported. So a little company started up in Santa Cruz called P.D. Smith. And they were called American Beauty Dolls. And the founder of it was a, a portrait artist and this is this is a doll. Everybody. This is Look at this. this is a P.D. Smith, and these are. I'm gonna just say this, and you may not. The world may not like this. This is probably one of the rarest dolls in this museum, and I normally don't um, enjoy sleeping babies. But this one, you look at it and you think, at any minute the, the, the eyelashes will flutter. And, you know, it's, it's really There's a piece so of art. There's so much life to this doll. I mean, the, the, obviously, as a doll company, this, it didn't work out and they didn't last in business because um, the, the labor involved mm -hmm. in painting a doll like this and inserting the lashes... There are very few of them in the world. It's wonderful. It's life size. It's I've never seen anything like it. The first no, thing it's we not wanted like to know was else. how do I get one? Yeah. Well, what you do is if you have an opportunity to get a PD Smith of any type, because there are others, and I hope that in the future, Rachel, that um, um, we have a member of our 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 circle that's very um, a, a great researcher involved in PD Smith and learning all about that. And by the way, that's how I knew it was a P.D. Smith because I'm a good little student. When we have a presentation, I pay attention and I listen. And I didn't know about P.D. Smith that they were made in Santa Cruz, but I listened. And then when the opportunity came up, I was prepared. How did you swoop in? I <laughs> <laughs> So that's how I, that's how I did it. And that's, you know, that's the... She's it. so great. We're going to give our viewers a look at this hair again and just this amazing it's modeling just amazing. and face. And, and it's made out of a composition. What is the body like? The, the body is a generic baby doll body. And that's what they had. Just what whatever they... But the head is a composition. It's a composition. We don't know what, what material they made. We don't want to, you know, do anything to, to hurt it. Uh, but it's just a... a fabulous piece of art and you know what's very interesting Rachel is it's like the reborn doll movement that's going on right now that I think is you know people are having fun with it I think it's great it's a reborn doll it's a hundred years old mm -hmm. so it just proves that there really is nothing new under the sun and I should tell you too that also that the famous Humpty Dumpty doll hospital which was Emma Clear's business she was one of the people that retailed the P.D. Smith, Smith dolls, oh, yeah. Must have So it's one. really a part of California history. So, I mean, as far as in David and my time here at the Grovian, she's never going to leave the premises. So, you know, as I said, it does make you really proud to be an American, it, a it Californian. Sure does. Because to me, here's a masterpiece of a character doll. And you just slide over here and here's a masterpiece of a character doll, too. And it's American. So it's a wonderful thing. It is wonderful. And this grouping is so great. And this goes to show you guys out there, you can have a little bit of everything. You don't Absolutely. have to collect just one thing. Absolutely. And look how well they, they go together on this table. Yes. And, and I mean, this is, a, this is a compliment to our studio audience. Because by having them here, they cheer us on. We're yes. not talking all by ourselves. 
and uh, they, they kind of keep us going. So we appreciate that. And any of your viewers that ever want to come back when we do this again, they, they're welcome to be the studio audience, you know? That's right. And yeah. our studio, a lot of our studio audience is tuning in right now uh, on this live feed. So what would you like to say to everyone that's been commenting and sharing well, thank over you. the thank last Thank you very days? much. And I think that the more it's shared and the more comments that come in, it's good for the channel, which, you know, Ruby Lane is hosting us. This is free to the world, but it isn't free to them to have all this. So I think they need to know that you enjoy it well, thank and you. that you want more. And, you know, well, what would we do without Rachel Hoffman uh, creating this whole new concept of education and sharing? So we have to thank you well, for that. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> We've got everyone here. You're so sweet, and thank you. And uh, the, like I said, the programs, it's like they just fall from heaven when we're here. So it, thank you for, and you and David, and, and your wonderful, dedicated staff yeah, and here at David, the if you notice that David kind of got out of doing his presentation. He did kind of, but he, he is, yeah, we will do slippery. something next week. Yeah, we're going to so catch that, him. He's mm -hmm, not that yeah, slippery. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get him. Yeah, we'll get him. We'll get him. Thank you all. Say say bye-bye. 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 We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.